Larry Malloy won a Super Bowl championship with the Patriots, and he was all everything at UW for sure, and just a tremendous NFL career, and uh, even had a bit of a run with baseball. We're going to get into that. Uh, I, you know, some people don't know that you were drafted by the Tigers, and I just we'll talk about that in a little bit. Oh, but uh, what have you been up to lately, man? Man, just uh, being dad. You know, 15 years in the, in the NFL uh, pills in comparison to being a being a dad to four daughters, four girls. And a wife. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather play football. <laughs> Amira uh, just finished her, her collegiate career at University of Washington. She has a job now with benefits. Okay. Uh, so, <laughs> hooray. That's important. <laughs> I'm trying to wean her off uh, slowly but surely. Um, and then Kiki is my second daughter. Went to Redmond High School. Uh, she got a, a full-ride scholarship to Tennessee Vols. Uh, then I got uh, Tia. Um, she's 13. She's doing really well. Um, uh, and then Brea is, is my seven-year-old. Um, and they're all really special, good young girls and uh, well-mannered. And, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're sporty girls. Yeah, so. yeah, tremendous athletes, huh? Yeah, yeah. How much fun has that been for you to be able to watch them? You know, um, one thing is is to have personal success in life. And I did that, you know, on, on, on the grand – you know, scale that the NFL presents for individuals to, to play on. Um, I know I, I grew up here in Tacoma, Washington with the UW, um, won a Super Bowl with the Patriots, uh, played for the, the Bills, the Falcons, and ended my uh, my career here at home, which was uh, uh, something I always wanted to do. Um, so I had a lot of success in, individually. Um, but there's nothing like seeing your, your kids' success. You know, seeing them work for something, seeing all the, 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 the hard times that people don't see, you know, when, when it comes to parenting, seeing all the tears and the conversations and you got to, you know, be better, let's work hard. If you want to go get it and to see them actually go get it, uh, you know, that that's what it's really all about. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I mean, you, you must be just enjoying uh, this part of your life. When you look back at your your athletic career, uh, where did you have the most fun? Was it was it pros, college or at Lincoln? Really, for me, it was every 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 single step. Um, you know, I, I came from humble beginnings. I know a lot of people know my story. Uh, uh, my family hit some hard times when I was in high school. Um, luckily for me, I had uh, the O'Connors down there. Uh, my best friend was Gary. He was a catcher on the, the baseball team. His family took me in, so I basically was was a foster kid, but not not really. Um, uh, so at a young age, I was uh, I had to figure it out. You know, I was making grown man decisions at the age of 15. Um, and, you know, sports was my release. You know, uh, I really, uh, where some people were going to school, I needed to go to school to survive, to eat. You know, and then when I was out on the field, I was I was destined. You know, I was destined to, uh, to, to help my family. I was the man of the house, and uh, uh, football gave me that, that clear path. It was about going to get a good, good education, and the, the best way I could do it is to get a scholarship. And uh, as many successes as I had at every level, I was always able to take myself back to the streets of Tacoma to humble myself. When you say that, when you go back, as your career progressed and, and you got the accolades and things. You look did, good, man. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. a legend. <laughs> Paul Sylvie, I'm here with him. <laughs> wow. We, we kind of grew up together. Like, wh- yeah, when man. When did you start? You, what you don't remember, I started here in 93. And, yeah. and you, so I've been here 26 years. But maybe what you don't remember, and this is, this, I'll never forget it because I was starstruck by it. You were driving a silver Ferrari, I think, at the time. <laughs> and I met you, and I pulled up next to you in my Chrysler Sebring. Oh, and I'm man. like, and I looked over at you, and it was like, it was about midnight, because I was getting off of work, and you were doing whatever. And and I'm like, damn, that's Laurie Malloy. And I'm like, hey, man. He's all grown over up now. Like, I'm like, man, Laurie Malloy waved to me in his Ferrari. Like, I made it. So yeah, that was like, you're the guy. That, was, that was hilarious, man. You're but you, you, you know, you don't remember that. For, but for me, that was like a cool moment to, to pull up next to an NFL player in his sports car, and you look over and you just kind of gave me a nod. I'm like, this, that was cool. So, yes. Well, this yeah, is I'm pretty little... cool for me to sit here with the really the sports face of, of, of Seattle over the last two or three decades. Like, I'm, I'm really honored to be here, man. Well, I appreciate that, Lloyd. I really do. Did you make those trips to Tacoma regularly? Not as much as, as, as I want, wanted to. Um, when I left Tacoma, I left Tacoma. There was a lot of, you know, bad 
feelings I had there. The, the struggle was real. I do um, go down there and, 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 and mix, mix it up with the, the team, um, uh, Lincoln High School football team as much as I can, uh, donate you know uh, silently uh, as much as I can uh, to the program. I think it uh, started with John Kitna and Co Coach Matt, uh, Matsuki now um, I think they've done a really good job of, uh, of, of dealing with inner city kids keeping them off the streets um, really changing that program around to something that we, you know I think all of us in Tacoma are proud of yeah he's yeah. really done a nice job down there and let's work our way back so when yeah. you say you come back to the Northwest you play for the Seahawks a couple seasons and and what was it like for you um, at the end of the run there playing <laughs> for Pete because I know he had man he had so much respect for you as a player yeah, so at every at every level, every step I, I took in my journey, uh, high school, uh, college, and, and NFL, um, I think I came back here in 2009, and I was after three years of uh, playing in Atlanta. Um, and it was a chance that Jim Moore gave me to basically just put on the uniform. You know, it was evident that Deion Grant and Babineau were going to be the safeties. He, he called me up the Monday after the releases or whatever and said, hey, I have a spot, but I want to be clear, you know, this is your role. And uh, again, that was a, a hard pill to swallow, but again, I wanted to put on that, that, that Seahawk uniform uh, for the first time, you know. Um, but my role uh, was, was flipped. Here I was a 13-year starter in the NFL. Yeah. And now I'm on special teams. <laughs> I hadn't played special teams since college, <laughs> yeah, you right. know. Um, you know, it's only like 10, 20 percent of the guys are really making the, the, the big money, right? But most of the guys are, are, are special team, you know, players. So I had to really get in their mindset, mm. you know. So imagine me being a four-time Pro Bowl, yeah, Super Bowl champion, and now I'm a special teamer. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm glad I experienced that, that, that part of the game because now I, I experienced the NFL in its entirety. Jim Mora's name doesn't get talked a whole lot about when it comes to Seahawks lore and head coaches mm -hmm. and things like that. But can you tell us anything about Mora, his intensity back in that one season that you played for him? Yeah, well, I, I was fortunate enough to uh, I followed Jim down to to Atlanta. Um, um, you know, when I when I left Buffalo, um, so I had him there. Um, I think they gave up on him a year, yeah, too early down there, and the same thing here. You know, he only had one, you know, one year, one one shot. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and I don't think that's enough to uh, see your plan, you know, get played out. I just think when the times got rough in in a, in a, in a, in a long NFL season, I don't think that he has the re the rest. He had the recipe in Atlanta and in the Seahawks to you know kind of grab the straps and say, hey, you know, this is my team. Here's how 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 we're, how we're going to get better through these tough times. And I think that was his demise. Yeah, people say about him that he wears his emotions on his sleeve, and maybe a little too much, um, you know, to a detriment. Where he, you know, he he would go off a little bit, um, even as the UCLA coach. It was like, you know, this guy's a really emotional dude. He's he's emotional. I think that uh, um, being able to delegate to you know to other coaches, so you're not that that that, that visible person all the time. You know, sim similar to, to Belichick, mm -hmm. you know, picking and choosing when you're going to show your face. And, and, and you know, I think that if, if you're the, the, the constant voice or you're the constant person on television, then you get, you know, people, you get oversaturated. You know, you got to pick and choose when you, when you give your message to your team and definitely to the public. What about uh, when you played that last year? Did you know going into that season, that last season with Pete, that maybe – it was time for Lori Malloy to hang it up. Yeah, I was ready to be retired you know, probably two or three years prior to that, hmm. you know. And then I went through the year of uh, being on special teams, and that left a sour taste in my mouth. I always wanted to go out on my own terms, and that's not the way I wanted to go out. But I was ready to retire. Yeah. And uh, talked to Pete, and again, you know, uh, had the same kind of opportunity. But I made sure that I, when I had the conversation with him, I said I will only – you know, come back if I have a chance to compete to play. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said, yeah, you know, um, we're starting this thing. We're, we're, we're trying to build the culture, which I understand and know, know about that process. When you're trying to build a championship, you got to start with the culture. And, um, you know, we're, we're building this thing through competition. And uh, when he looked at me, I saw a different peep from what I saw in New England. 
you know, 10 years before that. I saw, you know, somebody that figured out his recipe for success down at USC. And when he came, he came back in, obviously took <clears throat> uh, uh, the Seahawks, a, a tremendous, you know, city, uh, tremendous organization. Um, obviously he came in on his own terms and that's the look that I got. You know, I so, saw uh, for me uh, being a, a, a 15 year vet at that point, I, I really felt like I had an opportunity to compete. Yeah. Well, he always spoke of the fact that just having you out there and having your leadership capability and mm -hmm. the way you uh, the way you taught those guys around you and uh, led by example. He yeah. was always big on that. Yeah. You know, the, the thing about it is in the NFL, uh, uh, I think everybody's replaceable and through the draft, you know, no matter who you are, how much money you make. I think, you know, the draft is set up to, you know, to for you to be replaced. You know, they're always trying to get younger, faster, uh, for less money. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Period. This is a business. Yeah. Right? And um, you know, for I I think I, I kept going because I just I didn't never see anybody in the locker rooms that I went in that could beat me out. No matter how old I was getting, you know, probably <laughs> like Tom Brady feels like until you beat me out I'm going to keep playing this game. It wasn't until that last year where Pete gave me a chance to compete and we drafted two amazing safeties in Earl and Cam where I was like, I think this, I think we might have something. I think this is the, my, my chance to pass the torch. I just didn't want to mess it up. And the best way not to mess it up is to lead by example like Pete said I did. Yeah. Well, they, I'm sure those two looked at you like, man, I'm in the room with Lori Malloy, you know, Super Bowl champion, you know, 13-year vet at the time. It's like 14 It was. It wasn't, it, it wasn't all all easy. There was some, <laughs> especially with me and Earl, there, you know, Earl's, uh, um, uh, he, he, he's, he's, he's a different kind of guy. He's kind of an introvert, you know, uh, um, to himself. So it was kind of hard to, to break through that wall with him. Um, I, but I think in, you know midway through the season we started having good you know, communications. He started to understand, you know, um, what what it meant to um, to study, you know, um, and if you study the right way, you know, you're already fast. You could be that that much that much faster because you know how to be in the right place at the right time. Um, but that was a process with him. Um, Cam was was just hungry. You know, he was a later round draft pick, or whatever. Um, uh, you know, he would, you know, obviously uh, be in, a, in a, a, a strong safety, you know, like me. I just, you know, I was just hoping that he would emulate some of the things I was doing. And boy, did he. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, he did that and then made it better. Can you cite anything from Earl? Like, and we all know he he can be <laughs> he can be something else, man, on his own planet. Um, yeah. Back in the days when he used to speak to the press here. But... Can you, were there times, like an, a spe specific example? Uh, I guess the, the biggest one that, that sticks out, and he reminded me th of this um, uh, a while back, um, that there was a play against uh, the San Francisco 49ers. You usually have two calls within the defense. If the, if the formation changed by motion or shift, then the safeties rotate. Where Earl didn't rotate during the game, um, uh, Frank, Frank Gore, Bust up the middle. So as I'm making a tackle, I'm li like literally, literally yelling at Kent, like Earl, like, "No, you're supposed to rotate while I'm making the tackle." And he was like, <laughs> "Man, I've never seen anything like that." Like, so I was just really trying. Like the game was going on, but here I, I was still trying to teach this guy. Like, you know, the, you got to do every all the little things right. That's why I tried to try to tell Earl at the time. And uh, again, like I said, it, it wasn't all all peaches and cream. Um, but I, you know, once he got it, boy. Did you guys ever, like as teammates, did you ever get to the point where you're so intense you're face-to-face? -face? Like you have to, not I, even with Earl, but with anybody? Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's natural. Yeah. You know, in, in, in the heat of the battle, you know, you, 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 you're going to have, you know, some, some differences and stuff like that. But uh, for the most part, you know, after the, the practice or the game is over, you leave it on the field. Yeah. yeah. Was there a guy that you uh, – was it your Patriots days, maybe, where things got a little ramped up? Come on, man. You know, you know, there was a guy you you were going face. Who was the guy, man? Who was the antagonist, for Malloy? Malloy? There was nobody really tried me, man. Like yeah. they they knew. Like if they tried me, we we might have a few words, and I'm like, okay, you know, you better buckle up your chin strap because you know, definitely in practice, I can hit you for free.
you know, I'm not getting fined here. So, uh, was it receivers? The receivers are were, were you know, the most. Uh, I mean, they talk a lot. You know, the, the, the receivers are divas. You know, were you a guy that fought a lot in high school? No, no. So you, I was too busy playing sports. I played all three sports: football, baseball, basketball. You know, um, again, because of my my family situation, I was a lot more determined and focused than a lot of a lot of my peers at the time. Yeah. You know, so I didn't I didn't party and I had one girlfriend that was that was pretty serious and stuff like that, but uh I was always at practice. Man. Practicing games. All right, so I mean I wanna get into your Patriots days, but but I also want to talk about you talking about playing all your sports. You got drafted by the Tigers, nineteenth round I think it was as a pitcher. As a pitcher, yeah. Because you pitched for, for Washington. No, I got drafted uh first by Cleveland out of high school. Played uh Played baseball at the University of Washington, got drafted again by yeah. Detroit. Yeah, so I was just an athlete. I think one, you know, one of the things I don't like <clears throat> about kids right now is that they're not active enough. I think sports is is a, a, a good um, extension of, of parenting. If you you know, because it's all about time time waste management, right? The more time you give kids, you know, the more time they have to mess up. Mm-hmm. You know, kids nowadays picking one sport or, or being forced to you know, uh, uh, to stay in one lane. You know, kids are doing all this, uh, you know, uh, uh, extensive, like training, you know, uh, football. They do football or baseball, basketball, volleyball. They do it all year. Back when we grew up, we went from sport to sport. We were just athletes, right, until one sport, you know, you know chose you. Um, yeah, later on. Later on. Yeah. You know. Um, but so, that, that's, that's a, see, that's a cool approach, and I was always – that's the same way I grew up, where it was, mm-hmm. you know, it was football, um, you know, soccer, hockey, you know, because I grew up in Michigan. So yeah, it was yeah. like, you know, you just play those sports because it was just the next the season. The next thing, yeah. You know? That's all my buddies are going, so I'm going to that next yeah, sport. Yeah, exactly. So that was our rule. You know, luckily I got a, um, a beautiful wife, uh, ran track at, U- at UW, um, but our philosophy matches up. Like, we want athletes. So uh, our daughters played softball and basketball. Um, but just be an athlete. It breaks it up for the parents too. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't want to be on the softball field year round, like all year. Yeah. You know, I want let's go indoors for <laughs> for, for three I'll months. Tell you what, <laughs> my son, he they all played outdoor. But man, when one of my sons played got, played basketball, and and I got to go into a climate controlled facility to watch the sport. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I'm, this is pretty cool, I'm, man. Cool. I can get used to this. Let me take this scarf off. Yeah. <laughs> my, my 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 daughter start out. They, they all start out start out in soccer, and I think you know soccer is great. I mean, it's it's a booming sport. Um, you know, shout out to the Sounders, um, but again, um, you know, I, I I just can't sit there in a, in a you know, with an umbrella or you know being in a tent and watch you know kids run around, you know, for one goal or a tie. Like I, I like sports where you know you fight to the end. Like there there has to be one winner. You don't get a point for you know for a tie. <laughs> like yeah. forget that or cheerleading or something like that. Like no, you 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 had the cheerleaders cheat cheerleading for you. You yeah. know because you're out there doing the good things. When you came out, so you you played uh, what, football, basketball, baseball. Mm-hmm. So when you came out of high school, did you have a tough decision on what you wanted to do? What number one, what sport you wanted to play? Number two, where you wanted to go. No, go, again, going back to uh, my humble uh, upbringing and the things that happened to my family, and and let me go back. My my family's doing great now. That's good to you hear. Know, my mom is you know a tremendous woman. My my dad recently passed away, but everybody's doing great now. You know, I always leave them. You know, when I tell my story, I always leave them in the, in the streets. <laughs> but no, everybody, you know, everybody healed up the right way. We you know found the Lord and. Um, well, can I question? ask you this? And I hope it's not too intrusive, but your mom was 15 when she had you, correct? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Man. Yeah, my, my, my dad was 19. Uh, my mom was 15. Um, again, they were, they, were, they were young and dumb. The, 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 the best thing my dad did was move the family out here. He joined the military, so he was at Fort Lewis, um, you know, and got us out of uh, St. Louis, which, mm. you know, was, you know, you think things are bad here. You know, it was really bad in St. Louis, so <clears throat> made the move out here. So I've been out here since I was I was three. You know, my dad wasn't available. He was, you know, incar- incarcerated. Uh, my mom was, you know, on the streets doing what she was doing with, uh, you know, with drugs. I really was trying to find uh, the best way to to be a parent and support my my younger brother. Um, 
which was six years younger than me. Um, again, like I told you, uh, I was thinking more so, you know, get a scholarship through sports and, you know, get educated so I can get a good job, blah, blah, blah. Um, but I was just really, really good at sports. Um, but I was an athlete. Like, I, I excelled. I loved baseball just as much as, as, as football. You know, basketball, I was an athlete. You know, I obviously not tall enough or whatever, but you know, baseball and and and, and football, I really saw that you know I could I can go out here and compete. You know, if you give me a chance to compete, then you know, and then I let I let all the the you know the scholarships and the draft, I let all that happen naturally. Yeah, but you were pitching, man. Yeah, how I, fast I like were you to throwing? Have, I like to have the ball. I think I got clocked at ninety one my my junior year. Yeah. Yeah, I can sling it. <laughs> yeah, you know, man. The, the, the biggest thing with you know baseball is is that um, you know I couldn't hit the 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 funny stuff. You know when they start moving the curveballs and the sliders and stuff like that, I couldn't hit it consistently. Um, and then when I went to uh, going back to my decision to uh, as far as colleges, all the colleges I went to: um, Miami, Notre Dame, uh, Cal, UW. Uh, they all knew that I wasn't going there unless I could play both sports. Again, you know, I would I, I needed to have as many uh, avenues, give my, my my myself enough chances to make it to the next level. Man, that's cool. So you yeah. you basically that was that was priority for you. They you were all, not just gonna go play football. Yeah, Coach Erickson knew that. Like all like everybody knew that I wasn't coming there unless I could play both. And they and were of all those schools, they all said no problem. No problem. Yeah. Yeah. So what what tipped you to U Dub then? I was I was never leaving home, you know. At that time, your Huskies were kicking butt. You know, we we're not you know defending national champions. Um, you know, um, you know I, I was already going up I five every you know every home game, uh, going into you know going on to Mont Lake and 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 seeing those guys uh, impose their will on on the opposing team, seeing that atmosphere, seeing the boats on the water. You know, um, and then interacting with with the players, uh, you know, on my recruiting trips and stuff like that. I knew that that was the place for me. Um, also, um, I had a amazing uh, father figure. You know, obviously, you know, I had a father, but but he was you know locked up, and um, I was fortunate enough to have tremendous high school coaches that you know that were, were my father figures, even though we didn't never talk about it. But those who I look for for guidance and. Me being a, 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 a young man, I knew I needed to continue having that strong leadership from a, from a coach's, coach's a perspective, and I, I saw that in Coach James. You know, um, I, I, I saw the way that <clears throat> when, as soon as he opened his mouth, everybody came to attention, and I knew I needed that. Hmm. So he was he was a big reason why he was a big reason why yeah. you know um, and you you saw with the production and the wins yeah 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 man I want to be a part of it yeah, <laughs> yeah for sure well you had a lot of wins I got lucky that that my home team was 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 kicking kicking butt yeah you know and I wanted to stay close to see my you know hopefully see my family you know uh, heal up and you know everything just worked out yeah. in that way uh, definitely did I mean you go to New England and it's like mm-hmm. and the winning continues yeah. for you. Um, what was it like playing for Belichick? I mean, I'm sure you you've answered that question a ton, but he gets such a knock. Well, first first of all, I played for Parcells. Parcells mm-hmm. is the one that drafted me. So mm-hmm. imagine me ha- like getting drafted by Parcells. I don't know if you heard any stories about you know Parcells, but uh, take Belichick times times ten. Really? Yeah. Um, and you know they, they they really come from the same regime. You know Belichick was my deep defensive back coach under Parcells. So after he left uh, uh, the Browns, um, he came onto the the Patriots staff, and so here I was getting coached by, um, you know, Parcells, which was you know at, the, at that time you know had already won two Super Bowls with uh, with with the Giants, um, and then every day I was getting tested in the defensive back room uh, by Coach Belichick, which you know. Uh, more than any any uh, position group, I think that he really challenged us to be the best, you know, as far as how we study. Uh, his attention to detail was was crazy, you know, 
And I, I was just really, really blessed to you know be a, a rookie in the NFL, getting this tutelage by, by this, obviously what people know now. <laughs> I had that for free every day, you know? <laughs> um, but he was, when he tested you, Willie, was it literally like? So Parcel is led by, he wanted to break you down. No matter who you were, you could tell whose day it was by you know the the, the you know beginning beginning when when the rooster started you know uh, cuckooing, he you know be you know in you know Ricky's ear Terry Glenn's ear, um, ultimately I had my day, um, but he would just he would just say the off the wall stuff and just really you know just nag at you nag at you nag nag at you, and he, he played that mental game to see you know how tough you were, you know. Yeah, I know you can play play ball, but are you mentally tough? You know, and it's the mental tough guys that are gonna ultimately win ball games in the fourth quarter when when the game's on the line. So you you could tell when it was your day. Oh yeah, well, yeah. I mean, I, I'll, I'll go back to I forget who who the guy was, but he was a veteran doing a punt return. And so here I am, I come out. It's, you know, that's back when we did, did two days. I come out and he's in this guy's ear. Hey, you've been dropping a lot of punts, whatever. Da, 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 and the guy's like, Oh, I got this. You know, Bill, da, da, whatever. Leave me alone. And he said, Okay, I, I'll make a deal. You drop this next one, you can stay. If you, if it, I mean, if, he said, If you, if you catch this first, this next punt, you can stay. If you miss it, you're out of here. And the guy's like, <laughs> Whatever, man. And kind of like shrugged him off. Ball goes up in the air. He drops the ball. Picks it up. He runs. Whatever. And Bill just you know walks away. We we go through practice. We go into lunch. We we, we come out. Everybody's like, "Where's <laughs> he's gone, <laughs> gone?" And that year I saw him. He he cut a, a, a I think it was a fifth fifth round player. I mean, so you knew, you know, you better go in there and and and, and do your job, you know. And and you know, uh, uh, I had my day. You know, one day I was. Uh, in my position on defense, and he was like, "Hey, 36," and without me turning around, I'm like, "Oh crap!" You know, it's my <laughs> it's, it's my day. <laughs> he said, "You think you're tough, tough?" You know, he said the the S word, and <laughs> so I'm like, oh, "Okay, okay, lawyer, you got to do something good. You got to do something good." And there was it was a running play, luckily, and and uh, you know the, the running back came through, and I I mean I I smacked him hard. And uh, when I got up, I kind of peeked in the corner of my eye, and and, and Parcells, was, you know, had a little grin on his his his, uh, his face and was shaking his head in a good way. And I was like, okay, whew. <laughs> so he left me alone. Um, but you can you yeah. hit like that in practice, like back then, like oh, we played nowadays. Practice, practice was a game. Like we had four games before before Sunday came. Like, are you kidding me? The first thing that Parcells said in training camp. Is that there's no light at the end of, end of the tunnel? He said, "Veterans tell these rookies, do not be action for a break." And sure enough, we had, I think it was like 15 days straight, two days without without a break. No, it was about probably 10 days. I'm I'm exaggerating, but it was, it was a long time. Um, but that's back when I think, you know, we were we were better prepared. I think we tackled better back then. Yeah. You know, you're, you're seeing that, you know, in our game. I, I know they're trying, they're trying to make our game, you know, safer. And uh, but you know, it's still it's a contact sport, and you need that practice. Yeah. So you're you're the guy who's who falls on that side where you look at the fact that they can only have 11 pad practices throughout the regular season. That's, Eleven. That's amazing. And so guys like you, veterans that hit, what do you think about that? Like, you well, think I, you have you have to hit, huh? I I, I I do. I think that it made me it galvanized me. You know, it's it's kind of like you know uh, when you, when you go to lift weights for the first time, you know your your hands they get all bloody or whatever, and you know to the next day, and then the next day you you keep going back, and then they they get calloused up. It's the same thing with you know with, with sports. You got to you got to hit in, in order to, to to get your your body prepared for real contact. Yeah, these guys are getting carted off the field left and right because they just don't hit. You know how you you. you there's no way to simulate real live contact unless you're really if unless you're really doing it. Back then in practice, could you take him to the ground? Because that's all we hear in practice: is, stay up, oh, stay up. No, we 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 had periods. It wasn't take you know we we took care of each other. Mm -hmm. But there was you know uh, the only live stuff we had in practice was on the goal line, and I think we had <clears throat> um, you know that was at the end of I think we did at least one time a day, 
where it was like, okay, live, let's go. You like that as a player, yeah, huh? man on man, yeah. Yeah. I mean, think think about it. Here, here I am, a young guy, um, trying to make it in the league, trying to try to take somebody else's position. The best way I can do it is by you know by proving it. And uh, you know, I had you know Curtis Martin on the other side, Hall of Famer. You know, um, I'm sorry, Curtis, you got to get hit. You know. Um, you know, in the NFL, you don't have to look too too far for real competition. Like the the best, you're going against the best of the best. Um, and uh, I knew that you know, NFL is a game of opportunities, just like anything else in life. You know, um, so you know, I, I tried to obviously being a scout team player for the first six games of my my NFL career, I tried to get them guys hell, so I'd be prepared when I when I got my shot, mm-hmm. and that's what prepared me. Was there a guy that, that buzzed a little extra when, when you guys were going to have full contact or anything like that? Was there a player on your team? Was this like guys that just said, oh, man, this is it? What, what like, you know, get hyped and stuff? Yeah, like, you know, I'm sure you, you had a no, certain I, level. But, I mean, there's always kind of a psycho guy that, you know, I don't know. If, do, yeah. I, I say that in a, in a more competitive term, but a guy that just cannot wait to hit. Was yeah, there a guy I, like I that? Think, I, I think I was that guy for New England. Like, I don't think. Before I got to New England, I don't think there was anybody hitting the way I, I hit. I think I, I was it. I was that that missing uh, piece for 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 the backfield in New England. You know, uh, the talent was 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 growing. I already mentioned some of the names: Ty Law, like Willie McGinnis, but they didn't have a, a head knocking safety around there. Yeah, I don't think ever. But a guy like McGinnis was probably he liked but, to lay yeah, people yeah, out but, too. Yeah, but he was that's one position. You mm-hmm. got to have hitters at every at every le- level. Mm-hmm. So um, again, that's going back to to University of Washington how we practice. You know, we had a we had an NFL team right here on Montlake. You know, when it came down to you know to hustling, working hard, you know, um, being being diligent, being loyal, I learned that already. So my transition was a lot easier than some of the guys that I saw come in with me. So when you were playing those Super Bowl years, what was that experience like? Did you did you guys know that year when you played Game One that man we could have something special? No, 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 not at all. No, I think it happened the right way. You know, um, again, uh, uh, we had Parcells. We, we 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 were we were a team that had a lot of talent and and, and made it to the Super Bowl. Um, but we we weren't ready, you know. Obviously, Green Bay was 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 the upper echelon of, of the NFL, and and you know we the AFC was was uh, had a lot more parity, and 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 we got through there. Um, but the Green Bay was the better team. Um, then you go through Parcells leaving. He goes to the Jets. Whatever him and management or or you know the ownership had their problems or whatever. We had to kind of start all over. Pete Carroll comes for three years. Again, uh, we went to two playoff, uh, playoffs, two years, two out of his three years. The last year we didn't go to the playoffs. They got Belichick to come. The first year he comes, we get slaughtered, you know. And then he started with our young talent that we had. Um, he added in Roman Pfeiffer, Brian Cox, um, a few, you know, a few veterans along with 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 those guys, and you can see that they. It was clear that they were an ex- extension of Belichick. So, you know, when guys would gripe about practice or whatever, it was those guys that would step up. Like, no, nah, we need to do it like this. Even if they weren't, I don't think they were start. Like some of them were starting, but they they were just that 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 presence that we we needed in the locker room. Nine eleven hit that year. Um, we lose Drew Bledsoe, um, and Tom Brady comes in, you know. So with 9-11 and Bledsoe going out, we're already like, man, damn, it's happening to us again. <laughs> you know, the season's a wash or whatever. We got this guy coming, you know, coming in, and, and nobody nobody saw it. Saw Brady coming in. We actually had Damon Damon Heward. We had we had yeah. just signed him in the off season, which he had had a couple games, you know, good games against us when he was with Miami. So if uh, Bledsoe got hurt, yeah. I assumed that Heward was going to be the guy to to grab his helmet. But it was it was it was Brady. Was he a, a leader right out of the gate? So um, 
back then he was easy to to oversee, you know, until we did anything competitive in in the weight room and all that. I mean, you saw his 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 draft tape, right? He he wasn't the, the right. fastest guy, um, but he would always try to be in the front and can, he would challenge everybody. So that that's what we did know. Um, what we didn't know was was the heart and desire that he had, the passion that he had burning within him. Um, you know, the the, the 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 some he had something to prove. Uh, uh, we didn't we didn't see that aspect. The coaching staff did, and that's exactly what we needed. Yes, I mean somebody that's and the rest is history. Right? Yeah, man. I mean, <laughs> ultra competitive. We just we wanted him to compete. As a defense, we knew like, hey, we got even if it would have been Damon, like we 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 have to be on our p's and q's. You know, our our our, our uh, the name of name of our organization just went down. We don't know when he's coming back and bless so. You know, we have you know a quarterback that hasn't been getting in, like too many reps. Whoever the name on his back didn't matter. We were just defense. We 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 need to go out here and, and and shut people down. But to our surprise, you know, he went out there and and and, and was competing. And we started seeing throws. You know, I think they weaned him on. You know, week by week, and we was like, man, this 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 kid is special. You yeah. know, and he's the leader. Like he was he was that guy that would come over to the defense. Hey, give me the ball back. Let's go. Come on. Like whoa, we would like that. You know, it's a little, a little change. You know, oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the kind of guy that Brady is. Was there anything outside of football that you remember, along with him, with off-season stuff, or, or um, you know, anything like that? No. So I was a captain uh, of the team um, uh, at that point, and obviously he had he he got uh, like instant um, celebrity. You know, as we got better and closer and closer to the playoffs, obviously making to the Super Bowl, I just had a lot of one-on-ones with him um, about how to be a pro. He had a lot of questions about, you know, you know how to prepare, um, you know, where should I live? Like, it was like like rookie qu- mm-hmm. questions. And uh, he was just a sponge on, you know, uh, um, seeing how to be a leader, um, you know, um, what should he say? When 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 she when should he say it? I don't know why I can't talk. When should he say it? And I was like, Hey, look, man, if you're a quarterback on any team, even if you don't have a C on on on, on your chest, you're an honorary captain. Okay. You know, you know, and that this was at a point where you know we were pretty deep into the season. I was like, If you have something to say, you say it. You know, it was like little things like that. And then ultimately the biggest thing, one of the biggest times that I remember me and him kind of being alone was when we had to do the presser out in, in, in um, for the AFC Championship game in, in Pittsburgh. And uh, me and him um, were out there and it was all uh, black and gold. And uh, we just, we had a, a serious conversation like, man, we're going we're gonna to do this. Like there's nobody giving us a chance. Like we're we're gonna we're gonna go in here and, and, and kick some ass. Like, and uh, you know that's when I was like, man, we we got a special one here. You know, he talks he talks my language. And you guys were pretty big underdogs in that. Yeah, one. Pretty big underdogs, yeah. We were underdogs pretty much the whole season. Um, but we had we had an under, underdog mentality, you know, which which I I think helped us. Um, you know, and and we had a underdog slinging the rock, you know, that was trying to prove people wrong and prove that he uh, could fit in it in the NFL, yeah. you know, for a long time. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. You talk, about, you talk about not being, being able to hit in practice. Brady might play until he's 50. <laughs> you, can't cut, you can't touch a quarterback nowadays. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's true, man. Yeah, yeah. Um, when you look at your career, was there a game or a, a highlight of yours because you had 25 picks in your day? Um, was there something that stood out to you that said, man, that was a pretty good play? Do you allow yourself to think yeah, like that? Yeah, yeah. It was my aha moment, I think, um, where, you know, obviously I told you about, you know, having, you know, guys I looked up to in my locker room. Um, ultimately, my sixth game of my, 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 my rookie year, um, there was like two cornerbacks go down. And the safety was down, uh, so they 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 made Willie Clay our free safety play, a uh, cornerback, and I got my shot. You know, and uh, I did really really well. 
and I gave them no reason to put the other guy back in. So I never, I never looked back. So that was it, huh? Same thing with Brady. Like he was determined not to give the other guy a chance to get back in. Yeah. But my aha moment was uh, in Dallas uh, Stadium. We were playing the Cowboys, and uh, you know they were they were they were stacked um, with Troy Aikman. Um, Emmitt Smith was you know one of, one of the running backs I really looked up to, and uh, I remember a play where he came through the the hole, right up the middle. Boom! I make the tackle. I'm like, ooh, you know, I got on tape it, it looked like a regular hit. Like nobody won. Like he went down, whatever. He went back to the, the huddle. But I'm like, man, come on, Law. It's not about you know the, the name on on the back of his jersey. If he runs a ball again like that, I, I'm talking to myself like this. Like you, you better hit him. You know, you come from the streets of Tacoma. Like you know, this guy, this guy's trying to run you over. To, so I'm playing all this stuff, and you know, in my in my head. And sure enough, the they ran the same play again. And me and him, bah! again on tape, it looked like a, a simple hit. Same thing, but it, like when you hit somebody solid, solid, like real solid. It's like a home run, like it's effortless, right? It just comes off your bat. It doesn't ding, it doesn't you know sting your fingers or whatever. And that was one of those hits where I was like, "Ooh, yeah, that that's more like it, Law." I don't know if he had a pre-existing injury or whatever, you know. Uh, uh, but when I got up, he was still on the ground, and they came and got him. I was like, "Oh, that's that's Emma Smith on the, on the ground." I did that like um, again. He he probably wouldn't rem- remember that or whatever, but um, it was just. I was like, man, like I'm, I'm gonna respect the game. I'm gonna respect the players around me, and if, if, if I really think they're good, they're gonna really get you know my, you know, 100% of me, my focus, and all that, and, and that really led, led me to a 15 year career. Yeah, man. Was there anything when you went to play with Bledsoe and that Cougar Husky thing? Does that just get dropped with all the time the Cougars and Huskies team up in the NFL? Does it just get dropped? The rivalry. Yeah, well, yeah. Once you're once you're once you're making money with somebody and you're trying to win championships with somebody, I think all that that college stuff is out the door. Yeah, you know. Um, but I will tell you that uh, I won a lot more bets with him on Apple Cup weekend than he did. I still have a picture of him in in, in uh, Damon Hira's Husky jersey, Rose Bowl jersey. <laughs> <laughs> I bring it out every like every every now and then from time to time. But um, yeah, I'm I'm a, I'm a Northwest guy, you know, and and. Um, I'll, I'll put it on there that you know I root for for them as long as we're not playing them. Yeah, I think that the Northwest doesn't get you know enough credit for the athletes that we have in all sports, and you know we're out there. Yeah, tell me about the bet. Tell me about when you said you won bets. Did, was it something where if if you won the Apple Cup, he had to wear like wear, Bledsoe had to wear wear a jersey. Yeah, yeah, uh, uh, and I was obviously smarter smarter than him because of the the years I knew that we had no chance, which was a few. Um, I, I didn't bet him, you know, so I got my bet out early with the picture in the jersey. And then after that, I was like, I was real strategic about, <laughs> That's <laughs> not fair, man. I don't give a shit. Hey, <laughs> whatever, dude. Uh, I'm not putting on a crimson, crimson uh, jersey. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> that would not happen. You can cut my eyebrows off before I put a crimson jersey on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man, before I let you go, since I'm from Detroit or from Michigan, a uh, Detroit suburb. You uh, want to know where my third daughter wants to go to school? U of M. U of M. Yeah, man. Did I, you go there? No, I, I dreamed of going there. They offered me a chance to walk on like many guys get. Do you know, you know why she wants to go to U of M? No, tell me. So Coach Hutch, which is their legendary softball coach, she was on uh, television. She had a, sh- a shirt on that said, Try not to suck today. And my daughter was like, that, that's going to be my coach. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. They're good, man. They're they, good. They, they're, they, they yeah. they have, they've had some yeah. good runs lately. So she wants to go to Michigan, huh? She wants to go to Michigan. Yeah? Yeah. And just like I changed, you know, jerseys, you know, wherever my daughters go, I'll, I'll, you know, I'm always going to be a Husky. Yeah. But I'll put on that jersey. Sure. Man, a lot of pride, too. A lot of pride. Your daughter's. You know Tennessee, Washington, maybe Michigan. Those are <laughs> yeah. those are just three great schools. Yeah, Man. Long, as long as they're dreaming, I'm, I'm okay with yeah, that. Yeah, proud yeah. Papa for sure. Now let's, now let's go work for it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's great catching up with you, lawyer. I mean, awesome. It was. Uh, yeah, I really appreciate you jumping on, and uh, it's really great to hear about the family too, and all the success you're having, and how how much success you're just enjoying as a family. That's great. All right, anytime, man. Thanks for having me.